This video will cover section 135 in Hanson and Quinn's Greek and Intensive course, and we'll talk about unattainable wish. You'll find this bittersweet concept on pages 500 and 501 of Hanson and Quinn. Back in section 61, we learned about the optative of wish, one of the two things that an optative could do on its own. And we learned that when we see atha or agar and a present or aorist, aorist optative, it can be expressing a wish. And that even without atha or agar, you could have, if you had an optative on its own and no on, you could be expressing a wish. May something happen, if only something would happen. And so we learned that a while ago, but now I get to tell you that atha or agar with an indicative, a past tense of the indicative, expresses a wish you know cannot come true. The negative is may. With the imperfect, the default translation is if only she were verbing. But we know that can never be happening. In the aorist, the default translation is if only she had verbed. But we know that was impossible is the implication, but it could never be true, except perhaps with the use of a time machine. With unattainable wish, you have to have atha or agar. Otherwise, since we are using indicatives, it could be confused with a simple statement of fact. But with atha or agar and a past tense of the indicative, we are stating something that we wish were true, but could never be. So, for instance, Atha hai sophai tus neanias me adidaxan. If only the wise women had not taught the young men. So, in some context, this is about um, a situation in which we're really sad about the outcome of this and we're really wishing that they'd never done the thing that they actually did and there's no changing it. So, it's a wish that cannot be attained. Or perhaps, Agar ton polemon epowomen. If only we were stopping the war. So it's expressing something that we know can't be happening. And it's sad to see that that's true and there's regret here, but this wish is unattainable. So if you see Atha and Agar, so far you have been conditioned to go into an optative of wish. But if Atha and Agar introduce a sentence that has an indicative, if there's no optative there, then what you're looking at is an expression of an unattainable wish. So this is another reminder always to look at the mood of the verb. It's telling you something and sometimes it's telling you something really important that distinguishes it from another form entirely, another kind of sentence entirely. And that's what you need to know about unattainable wish.